Welcome everybody to this edition of X Live, coming from X Blues headquarters just here in Saint Germain, just west of Paris. My name is David Cunningham. I'll be your sort of host uh, for this event, and I'll be joined shortly by a colleague from one of our other factories in uh, in France, uh, from Brest in Brittany. Um, we're still a bit constrained with uh, movements and so on in France, so we're maintaining this sort of remote uh, uh, construction of this webinar. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, our Delft geophysical software suite uh, and, and, and trying to give some snapshots of the uh, efficiency boosting features of that, 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 that software suite. Um, this, the, the, the format of the day, will be, it's probably about 25, 30 minute presentation. We set up a series of, of, um, of movies to, to show different aspects of the software. The idea is to cover the whole story but not in tremendously great depth. Um, so if you want to know more at the end, then please don't hesitate to contact us on any specific points. Uh, and we will be running some future, future webinars on specific elements um, that we'll go into a little bit later on. Um, so if you've got any questions which arise during the presentation, don't hesitate to post them on the, on the webinar platform and we'll, we'll answer them all at the end of, of, of the show uh, or the presentation. Um, anyway. Enough from me. Let's introduce Philippe Alain from our factory in Brest. Philippe is the uh, geophysical product manager for, for XBlue. Welcome, Philippe. Good morning, David, and uh, thank you everyone for joining the, this event. Uh, it would be a pleasure to, to present you the, the dev software range today. Okay, so what we'll do uh, as a starting point, maybe Philippe just give us a very brief introduction to, to the Delft software suite, where it's come from, who it's for, and so on. Yeah, exactly. So Dell Software is part of the X-Blue range of uh, products and software. We have software for various um, products like positioning, uh, inertial surface, etc. Um, the Dell Software that we'll talk about today is a geophysical software suite, which is uh, devoted to the acquisition and processing of geophysical sensors, uh, being seismic, subalum, mag, size and sonars. Uh, this comes from a long running history uh, from the past 30 years uh, we've been in the industry. Uh, so accompanying the changes in the workflows for our users. Uh, and today we'll present you how to optimize uh, the data collection and the processing of the geophysical data. Um, in two chapters, uh, one part will be towards the surveyors and how to collect uh, the raw records, and one part will be towards the hydrographers and geophysicists who will do QC data analysis, mapping, and interpretation of the complete project. So that will be the two, two aspects covered today. Okay, so so that's the brief overview. What So what what... As I said, we've prepared, or what Philippe and his team have prepared, as a, as a, as a, as a series of, um, of sort of movies, which uh, we'll, we'll run through slowly and describe the, the, the different elements of it um, from on the acquisition and then the interpretation processing side. Maybe just start with a quick overview of the of the full uh, software suite, Philippe, um, just to explain the different modules that are available. Yeah, right. So you will see some mapping on the screen right now. So this is the composition of the software suite. So there is a lot of different modules. The software is very modular. And it comes all from the data collection from the sensors, which you have on the, the bottom left. Uh, all the yeah. sensors and the data collection through what we call the Delft acquisition product, which is the first product of the range, leading to uh, the raw data records. Um, that's something that uh, the geos will then work on throughout the Delft interpretation software, which is more the right hand part of it. Uh, and they will find dedicated modules for uh, filtering, improving the data for uh, size scan, seismic, and magnetometers. And to quickly achieve uh, maps, georeferenced results that they will display in the Delft roadmap software, which is not a product as such, but our core uh, 3D visualization platform, which is a cartographic environment in 3D, where we go from the raw data to the process records and we do the data management in here. Um, so people can do QC, mapping, interpretation, and reporting of their surveys. Okay, so that's the, that's the quick overview, the quick snapshot of the, of, of the full software suite. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna focus initially on the acquisition side of life and then later on the, the interpretation side of life. Uh, and during the, 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 the small movies that we'll show you now, you'll, see, you'll also see the Delft roadmap, which is the 3D uh, cartographic uh, visualization module. Uh, which which essentially links the the two sides of the uh, of the product suite, um, and so you'll see elements of of of, of the data appearing in that environment um, throughout uh, the presentation. So let's move on, Philippe, to the um, to the acquisition side of life, and here's just just the the focus of the acquisition 
Okay. Yeah, the drawing is very simple. We come from the sensors and the navigation data to the raw records. Uh, it's very essential in there to log only raw data, do not any pre-processing in there, um, data collection from the navigation, proper timestamping, and using the standard industry formats, um, XTF, SegWise, and so on. Um, as you will see on screen, the software uh, is composed of two, two sides in there. The real part of it, the, the data collection software, is the left-hand side. Uh, in which you will find the traditional real-time display of, in this case, the scrolling side scan data, signals, uh, navigation repeaters. Uh, also, what is key is this reasonably simplified user interface, so very few commands, uh, big indicators monitoring the data quality if you are requiring logging and collecting the navigation safely. Um, and so this is really what people want to monitor during the survey operations. Um, okay. In a second example, we will see uh, a quite similar user interface, uh, but in this case, for the uh, sub-bottom profiler, um, right now on screen, yeah. Um, so you will see the very same familiar uh, user interface. In this case, it's sub-bottom profiler data. This comes from uh, an ECOS 10,000, which is part of our range. Uh, just uh, behind of you, David, is this uh, transducer uh, that we are manufacturing in the uh, sonar division in NextBlue. And the right-hand side of the screen is the uh, Delphrod map software that you briefly talked about, which is our 3D cartographic software. So in this case, we are monitoring uh, the real-time track plot, uh, location of your vessel, your sensors, uh, within a familiar cartography, within, with the uh, bathymetric surfaces, uh, background coastal controls, background charts, anything you would like to see to correlate your acquisition data together with the maps. And of course, you can run the acquisition standalone or you can accompany it with the uh, roadmap software, which takes no configuration, so it's live data with um, in a very simple way. Okay, so that, that that that's two very quick samples of, of of acquisition. So showing the common interface, the real simplified interface of the acquisition modules, uh, alongside the, the 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 sort of real time visualization of of, of the geographical uh, context uh, in the Delft roadmap uh, module. That's that, that's useful, Philippe. So now we want to move on from there and put that acquisition side of life to one side and, and focus on the on the sort of the the business end of, of things and uh, get into the interpretation and the and the QC elements. Um, just give us a quick snapshot again of the of the modules concerned there, Philippe, um, and then we'll, we'll we'll run into a series of of of, of of short movies which demonstrate each sensor data and how and how that can be uh, handled. Okay, so getting out of the survey data collection operations, we now have some uh, raw data recorded, or it can come from any recording system as soon as it's standard uh, industry formats in there. Uh, the data will reach the Delph interpretation software package. Uh, we will at first go into the first, uh, the very fine tuning of the data processing within the dedicated modules um, or SASCAN, Seismic, and MAG. And then we will see how to use uh, the very optimized workflow in Delft to quickly achieve results, uh, process data, uh, cartography results, the maps, uh, and how the roadmap software can help you also in a global understanding and global QC of the, the survey. So we'll okay. show you some sample projects. Um, the first project right now is the uh, size scan data processing. So we briefly saw the roadmap software in which we see track plots and coverage displaying. So this is where we bring the raw records. And we have this uh, user interface, which is very intuitive to uh, tune the gains and the processing settings for the sonar records uh, to apply them to, to the file, so to get the best, uh, best results out of the, the data records. Uh, we can optimize the gains, we can fine tune the bottom tracking, et cetera. So that's a good uh, QC level of the, the individual records, let's say. Um, this is also the place when we will uh, uh, save these tuning processings, and then we can further write to the complete data sets. We will see that in the in second chapter. Um, right now on screen, it's some target picking out of the waterfall. So some, if you want to do systematic uh, target picking out of the sonars, uh, either you can just create them and they will open in the uh, analysis environment. We are helping users uh, providing automatic measurement of the targets. We detect the echo shadows and decline the measurements. So to save a lot of uh, manual operations in there. But you can also just uh, flag the targets on the waterfall. So what you will see uh, in, in a few seconds, just picking some targets. And then we have all the targets appearing in the, in the catalog, which is the uh, target manager. 
to place to have an overview of the target database to do filtering, sorting, um, intuitive drag and drop of the targets to the, to the categories, etc. Uh, so something again helping a lot the uh, the manual operations. Um, by the time you are working, the map is being built, so we can see now all the targets which have been created uh, directly on the map, uh, combined with all the other uh, data information. Um, we will see the, an example for the mosaic in the second stage, but right now this was yeah quick presentation of the user interface for processing and do the fine tuning uh, of the, the, the size can sonar data processing. Okay, excellent, Philippe. Thanks for that. As I say, it's a whistle stop tour through the uh, through the software and hopefully we, you're picking up some ideas of some of the features which uh, which can bring efficiency and, 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 uh, and speed to the operations here. Uh, and now if we move on to the next um, uh, topic being the sub bottom profiler data, and hopefully you'll hear you'll see some of the common elements in the interface and so on. And you'll see once again the data visualized in, in, in the Delft roadmap um, software initially. Let's have a look at that, exactly. Philippe. Yeah, so you will see a second project. Um, we start from the same roadmap software. So this is not individual software, it's all working with the with the same core parts. Uh, so now within the roadmap software, what we see is the uh, the track plots and the uh, georeference sub-bottom sections. So this is something we provide like we do the, the sonar mosaicing. So we create uh, very quickly these uh, three defense diagrams. You can import external data like uh, core logs uh, that you can you can bring and overlay onto the 3D, but also onto the uh, sub-bottom profile. So to correlate the reflector interpretation together with the uh, ground truthing data. Um, we see the bottom window, which is the, uh, the processing window. So this is where we are picking reflectors, but also the place for tuning uh, gains, filterings, um, all kinds of processing that apply to sub bottom profiler data or reflection seismic data. And once we have the data process, so we can directly map it, uh, like you see now, we have a complete view of the uh, sub bottom profiler project. We can see all the connections between the profiles, vertical corrections, and also a 3D view of your sub bottom interpretation. So you can check uh, the global consistency of your sub bottom interpretation. That's great, Philippe. Excellent. Um, and now we're going to move on and we're going to look at some Maggie data. And I think this is the first, maybe the first occasion where we start to sort of see some blended data, which starts uh, revealing the power of this uh, um, 3D visualization of combined data sets in one environment. Yeah, right. So let's see the, the next project for the, the magnetometer. Uh, you will see in this video, though, so that we have, again, the same mapping software integrating more sensors. Uh, we can see the magnetic data first being plotted like uh, a wiggle uh, vector vector line. So we can see the track plot. We can see the anomaly um, as, a, as a vertical vector line. We use the, the vertical dimension for that. And very quickly, we can do the filtering and the mapping of the magnetic anomalies, uh, magnetic anomaly gradient, and so on, create different surfaces uh, that will help us to locate uh, all the potential hazards in the, in the survey field. So this creates uh, this, uh, this surface. We can directly use uh, the transparency features and the combination of all the layers in the project to combine the MAC together with the bathymetry, uh, to combine it with the side scan, to combine it with the sub bottom profiler. And, and again, to save time in the operation, so we can directly spot uh, the magnetic anomalies out of the map and zoom into uh, those anomalies and look at the layers behind so we can see uh, the side scan mosaics uh, behind of it. So if there is any hazard, is it at the surface of the, the seabed? So like in this case, we have a big anomaly, and from the side scan, uh, we can directly spot uh, the wreck being displayed right, right now on screen. So this is how the map can be quickly processed and very efficiently drive your interpretation of the, the side scan records. Um, if it was not uh, at the surface, maybe the sub bottom profiler in the 3D view can help you uh, reveal some buried features. Um, this second example is a very small thin cable which is uh, down on the ground and again just zooming into the magnetic anomalies will quickly reveal uh, the features uh, from the larger scale high resolution side scan uh, mosaics or, or sub bottom features. So that's already some uh, good combination of the different sensors because all the data is georeferenced and we take benefits of this uh, georeferencing in this 3D uh, visualization. Mm. Again, that's excellent, Philippe. Thanks for that that short uh, short video. It, it's uh, it's excellent to see it all all coming together. Um, so so moving on from there, so we can see the power of the three D visualization, multi sensor data, 
Um, and I think the next thing we want to focus on is, is, is now looking at mosaicing and, and batch processing and the efficiencies that we can bring to the operation from those, uh, those modules. Yeah, that's one of the key, uh, key, key facts in the dev software is really to focus on uh, an efficient workflow. Uh, make sure that uh, the geophysicists don't spend days and days in uh, tweaking buttons and windows and to uh, process the data in, in long time. Uh, so to achieve the results much faster, uh, we want to reduce all these manual operations. Uh, this means like fine tuning of the processing settings on a few records out of the, the SiteScan uh, survey. In this case, we have some example of a wind farm project uh, with a complete side scan coverage. And so we will use uh, the fine tuning we decided on a few samples to apply it to the complete uh, data set. So right now it's of course a bit exaggerated, but you have the timing on the bottom right. Uh, we are processing this uh, 180 records of side scan data uh, in about a little less than nine minutes, I guess. Uh, so very quickly, directly reading from the raw data using the standard format, achieving the process results. Uh, and now the complete survey has been processed in just, yes, less than 10 minutes. Out of there, uh, we do additional QC steps, of course, and we can run directly the, the mosaicing stage. So we will decide the resolutions, the strategy, et cetera, but we will directly create uh, the mosaics also in a very efficient way, directly uh, saving the mosaics into a standard GeoTIFF data format. So there is no further export required and we directly have the high resolution. It's a 10 centimeters mosaic in this case, uh, being achieved in just a few, just a few minutes, it's a little less than, than 10 minutes in this example, which means a total uh, processing time of roughly 20 minutes for this uh, complete size scan data set, which is quite, quite fast, of course. Um, and anytime you can reprocess, you can improve the data, reprocess a complete data set in, in just a few minutes. Um, now that we have the data ready, we see uh, right now is the uh, high frequency uh, mosaic, alternate with the uh, low frequency mosaics. With the transparency features in the map, you can directly switch uh, in between the high and low frequency. Uh, so inspect the features, seabed classification and uh, seabed features. So right now is a few zooms on such areas. Uh, and then this is the same environment in which you can do further uh, seabed classification, contouring of the, the seabed faces, and also uh, do the target picking. So we've seen the first example of target picking from within the sonar waterfall, uh, but we can also process to the target picking directly from the map. Uh, as soon as we see the targets on the mosaics, we can flag them, create the targets, and they will also add to uh, the target catalog, which is now displaying on the, the right-hand side. So we create targets and the targets get logged. We see them in the catalog. And directly from there, uh, once the targets are created, we can further inspect, uh, measure, classify the targets. So as previously said, we can help the users a lot in saving time. So you can just flag all the targets very quickly without waiting for windows to open and so on. Further on, focus on the interpretation of targets. Uh, in there, the software is adding, saving a lot of time by directly uh, computing the measurements from targets, the dating, target echoes, shadows, etc. cetera. So to reduce again, the, all the manual operations in all the measurements that can be done uh, on the field. That's great, Philippe. Thanks for that. So there's a little snapshot of the, the power of the yeah. batch processing and, and mosaicing functionality and, and, a, and a little snapshot on the, um, on the interpretation um, of some sonar data. Um, now, we touched on it a bit earlier and we saw some samples of, 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 of some kind of combined data sets, multi-sensor data sets, Philippe. And I know that you've got another example from LARV. Um, uh, of, a, of a multi sensor data set, which reveals quite a lot of uh, interesting features of the software as well. Yes, exactly. So we will see a next uh, project uh, in which we are combining a few sensors. This was a, a survey in the, uh, in the harbor of Levav in the, in the previous uh, conference last year. Uh, so we can see already background information like uh, audio photography of the, of the harbor, uh, integration of the uh, multi bathymetry, which has been acquired uh, during this survey. And we are now looking at the uh, sub-bottom sections, which have been collected by the sub-bottom profiler. So we've been using a pole-mounted high-resolution sub-bottom profiler, which is the uh, ECHOS 10,000, which has been uh, presented in an earlier webinar and which is on, on stage together with you. Um, we see also the 3D interpretation right now of the uh, sub-bottom sections. So we did the picking of the reflectors and they will all appear in the 3D map so we can check consistency and all the necessary vertical corrections. 
Further on, now we are adding the uh, side scan information. So we are overlaying the uh, bathymetry with the side scan mosaics. And this is very helpful because we can already combine uh, not only the high resolution aspect from the side scan, but also the relief uh, from the bathymetry. So this is already a good QC about uh, the target location, if the positioning was done right, uh, and also helps revealing uh, all the bumps and, and, and holes uh, the, the real topography of the, the seabed features we see in the side scan. So here is a small object, so we can see the bump uh, on, the, on the bathymetry, not so high resolution, together with the very high resolution side scan uh, imagery. Um, also, we have this kind of trench, which is there in the, in the harbor, so we can combine bathymetric and side scan. We can see the detailed shadows uh, and topography, but also we can see uh, the perturbation of the superficial sediment uh, directly in the subbottom sections. So watching all the, the two bottom sections in 3D helps connecting uh, this perturbation uh, throughout the, the records and combining them with the uh, topography and the high resolution imagery. So this is a good example on how uh, to assemble the complete data set and not only uh, do the nice images, but this is really helpful for a, a global and accurate understanding of the, the survey uh, from QC to uh, interpretation. And this is really the tool that you can work on uh, during the, the, the geophysical data analysis. So here is now the complete overview with these uh, different data sets. So now you have a better overview of how to combine all this information, provided that you have, of course, a, a good positioning solution uh, and high definition sensors. That's excellent, Philippe. Thanks for that. So there's a, a, a really good example of, uh, of, of, of the power of bringing everything into the one environment in Delft Roadmap to, uh, to visualize quickly the, uh, the characteristics of each data set. And as you say, relying on, on good navigation to georeference uh, e each of the sensor, sensor types. Um, so, so that's it for our, um, of our, of our of the main of the main videos on the processing uh, or the interpretation uh, modules. Um, I think, you know, it's about the formats, it's about the common workflow and the batch processing and the, the, the efficiencies coming from all of that, Philippe, um, and the multi-sensor integration. Let's, let's have a little think now about um, the real-time processing, because I know that's a feature of the software which is really, really powerful, especially in this age of, of, of um, the proliferation of unmanned or uncrewed uh, survey platforms and how to deal with that you know, revolution in an efficient manner. Yeah, for the very first uh, years of the, the Delft software, we've always been uh, striving to provide real-time data processing um, already for CNAC capabilities on board the survey vessels so to be able to directly spot hazards and to re-inspect uh, information while still on the field without waiting for any post-processing in the office. Um, and this is something we've pushed further so to be able to automate uh, data processing, data mapping uh, on any uh, embedded computer, so to be able directly within the, the, the computers uh, on board crude vessels, but also uh, AUVs or USBs, be able to uh, do the necessary steps of data processing, data mapping, so the maps are available directly on board uh, these vehicles. Uh, this also provides an immediate uh, availability for data for QC, so meaning that when the vehicle comes back, you can directly look at the uh, process records and maps, so the QC can start instantly without waiting for all these initial, initial stages of uh, data processing. Um, so on the field, you can quickly also on a crude vessel plan directly uh, coin location, grab sampling, etc., uh, because all the information appears georeferenced. Uh, same thing if you see some buried features on the sub bottom, you can spot them and re-inspect them or do closer shorter line spacing to, to inspect them. Uh, so we've seen on screen just before some real-time sub-bottom processing. Now it's real-time uh, side scan mapping on top of the bathymetry. So as soon as we start logging the data, uh, we start processing uh, records and building the mosaic so we can complete uh, the real coverage of the data and we can further inspect uh, the real-time map. So here is the uh, side scan Mosaic being built uh, soon should come uh, onto some uh, some wreck in this uh, in this survey, so we can directly see not only in the real time waterfall but also uh, directly from uh, from the maps uh, where the features are located. So now we can see that that wreck, so we can closely inspect. We have the high definition mosaics already 
available, standard formats, like always, uh, and we can already combine it together with the other sensors to confirm uh, whether it's been seen on the bathymetry, on the magnetometer, et cetera, so we have a good confirmation in real time. That's excellent, Philippe. I think it's good to get a snapshot on that and, and to get an understanding that the software from, from the very outset was built with, with the goal of, of creating uh, a solution to process in real time. So really yeah. just focusing on shortening that, that, that time to the end result um, uh, across all the sensor types. Um, that's good. Okay, so now we, we've come to the end of our, roughly to the end of our presentation. Hopefully we've kind of whetted your appetite. We've, we've sparked your imagination as to how this software might uh, bring some efficiencies to your own operation. If, if, you, if you want to know more, then don't hesitate to contact us and Philippe and his team will be really happy to engage in a dialogue on your specific data or your specific uh, sensor integration or sensor type. Um, as I said earlier, we're, we're, we're planning to do more webinars in this series. And, and I think that the two that we're looking at doing are looking at the interpretation and processing of, of, of side scan and Maggie data in one event and then uh, in a second event uh, with seismic and, and subaltern profiler data and uh, let us know you vote you tell us which one you'd like to see first and we'll 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 uh, we'll react accordingly um yeah so philippe we've got some questions but i mean i think just in summing up um the key takeaways are you know the the multi-sensor 3d environment the batch processing the efficiency coming from the real-time uh functionality real-time processing um, did I miss anything? Yeah, no, if you, I would summarize, I would say that um, a first stage is to ensure that you have a proper data collection with good sensors, good positioning, make the raw data uh, very raw so we can do the, the best processing out of it. Uh, and then it's really all this time-saving uh, workflow. So it's having a, a very good understanding of how operations are done, uh, save time and manual operations to the geophysicist uh, using the adding functions like uh, automatic target measurements and so on. Uh, provide all the data, high resolution, directly in standard formats that users can further use in CAD software or GIS software. Um, so we are uh, ready to go when you, when you do the processing of the data. You have quickly uh, the data to work on and you save time for further interpretation, which is really the geophysical uh, work uh, rather than yeah. just buttons, I would say. So yeah, we are keen to, uh, to demonstrate, study existing customers' workflow, see how Delft can uh, help improving your life. Uh, so, yeah, more than happy to, to do further demonstration, yeah. Excellent. Well, we've now got some questions, Philippe, so I hope you're uh, sitting comfortably. Yeah. Um, first question. Um, does the software or will the software have automated filters to avoid manual boulder picking in the side scan sonar or multiple echo sounder data? Uh, that's, that's part of the fields we are working on. Uh, today, the results are not in production, but that's that's really something we've been working on and starting to have good results about it. And it's not only about boulder picking, but to have uh, to, to determine everything that is uh, getting out of the data set, I would say non-natural, so it can be sparse objects, it can be uh, located objects, individual objects. So that's something uh, we, are, we are working on, but it will take a little more time uh, to achieve this. Um, already saving all these manual uh, boulder measurements, meaning just picking them, but they will get automatically measured. You can directly filter them by size, length, height, et cetera, and to automatically uh, bring them into the right categories is already some feature that saves uh, a lot of time. Um, we know we won't replace the human completely, so it's good to provide this level of, uh, of QC and adding function. So we are working on that. The intent is not to create thousands of wrong targets. We prefer to really work on uh, what would be efficient in a real life uh, workflow. Okay, so we do some auto we've got some automatic features in terms of uh, target classification or measure dimensioning. Um, there's a plan to increase the the target picking the uh, and to automate yeah. that in 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 the roadmap, as it were. Um, but we're going step by step. We don't want to uh, let's say go too far before we we we, we really trust the uh, the functionality. Exactly. Okay, another question. Um, can you plan your navigation in Delft acquisition? Uh, so the, the, the planning of the, the, the lines can be done uh, within the, the roadmap software. Uh, you can input coordinates or if you already 
it's online planning. So that's some information you can add as layers or create uh, the lines from within the, the roadmap software. Um, also to notice that it's not meant to be a navigation software. Okay, we are still working in the geophysical field. So this is geophysical uh, data collection software, but you can import any, any line planning and monitor your uh, trajectories, your location on this uh, line planning here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's not, not designed to be a navigation suite, which leads up quite nicely to this next question, actually, Philippe, which is, uh, can you add data layers in your mosaic cable, cables, areas, et cetera, coming from formats such as shape files or, or DWG files? Yeah. So the uh, dev software is completely open to standard GIS formats. So you can import any data from DXF, shape files, GML, KML. Etc. So we support all of these formats. Uh, you can also import them as uh, for further drawing uh, of these. So you can import them as the uh, graphical annotations. You can then modify, uh, and you can also design by yourself um, any features, uh, contour features, uh, draw uh, pipes and cable locations, etc. And these can also all be saved in these standard same standard formats, um, DXF, shape files, etc. So back and forth, we can use these uh, these standard formats here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another one in the same sort of vein. I, I see you can display dynamic maps. Can you also make static charts maps? Uh, not know if I completely understand this one, but uh, uh, yeah, we have this 3D dynamic visualization of the data set, which is aimed to be uh, a tool for understanding the data set to QC and to do the interpretation, which is really uh, the geophysical work. Um, if it's the question of uh, producing, I would say, the, the, the paper charts in the end. Uh, no, that's not in the scope of the dev software. Uh, the aim is to prepare the data from geophysical sensors to GIS formats, and then to use regular uh, GIS platforms uh, that everyone is using with already the proper uh, scale bars, etc., that you are uh, using on a daily basis. So we want to provide the GIS data faster, uh, so you can use it directly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. Um, there's another one about the roadmap module. Um, so does the roadmap module come with Delph acquisition license or does it come together with the interpretation license? Okay, so the Delph roadmap software is a product that can be used uh, standalone for navigation purpose. So if you can use it with the Delph acquisition software, uh, just do downloading the roadmap and it will connect to the acquisition to directly plot uh, the trajectories. So even if you don't have the full Delph interpretation package, and then, of course, if you are installing the Delph interpretation package, you will get also the Delph roadmap installed uh, because it's really at the heart of the uh, processing suite. Yeah. So, Del yeah, De the, so the Delph roadmap module is available to anybody and everybody. Really, it's uh, it, it's a part of uh, it, it's the it's the core part of all of the modules. Um, so we've got another another question here, which is coming. It's about um, interpretated reflectors. So are the dete are detected in and interpreted reflectors um, easily exported to um, other software? Um, Kingdom, it's practical. Um, and that's certainly the case with this, the, this software and this application. So another question, um, how to make sure that data process in Delph is compatible with my existing workflow? Um, oh. it's, a, it's a tricky question that I don't know where, where you start with that one. Let's learn uh, about, a bit about your existing workflow. workflow. Yeah. yeah, it's not so tricky because we are uh, compatible with all these standards and very familiar formats from the industry as an input and as an output. Uh, we already implemented it in so many companies, dealing with so many acquisition software being Delft or further uh, OEM software. We are dealing with uh, all kinds of GIS applications in the back, uh, CAD softwares and so on. So Delph has been implemented in the industry for quite a while, and we are sure that it's uh, compatible with the most software that you are using as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how are we doing for questions? Have we got any more questions? Any more questions? Any more for any more? <laughs> yeah, here we go. We've got another one here. So let's let's just. Um, what about? Um, yeah. What about the? Um, the modules and dongles and stuff. How, how, how can the software be um, be acquired? Okay. In terms of modules yeah. and dongles and, and software licenses, how does can you just describe that quickly for us, Philippe? Yeah, I get it. 
So um, already you've seen from the metrics that we have uh, two main products, uh, Delph acquisition, Delph interpretation, which can of course be purchased separately. So you may only get the acquisition software if you need, or you may only get the interpretation package because you already have your acquisition set up and you just want to take the full benefits of the processing suite. Uh, the licensing is quite simple because we have uh, all these modules um, available in the licenses. So it can be an acquisition or processing license. Mm -hmm. And then you decide if you like to have uh, only the SaaScan or SaaScan and Maggie or SaaScan Maggie and Subbottom uh, on that same license. Um, so that's a very simple scheme depending on your needs. And we can, of course, uh, give a proper advice about what you really need for, for your operations. Okay. Um, so we've got another quick question. Um, can, can we organize a, a trial, a trial session with, with Delph? Yes, of course it's possible. So we have um, different ways to do that. Of course, it can be just a simple uh, trial license, a uh, temporary license for your use. Uh, so you can play with your own data and see uh, the benefits of the software. And still we like to uh, improve this by organizing a dedicated webinar. So just share a couple of hours together. Uh, so to help you in starting with the Delph software, make sure you use it in the most beneficial way so you can uh, just avoid to use it like any other software, but really take the full benefit of all the add-ons uh, regarding all the adding functions that we covered in this, uh, in this webinar. Okay, well, I think, uh, I think that's it for questions. Um, so hopefully uh, that's helped everybody. Um, and if you've got any, if any questions spring to mind after this, then please don't hesitate to... Uh, to drop us a line. Um, well, thank you very much, Philippe. Thanks for uh, putting those movies together and uh, explaining things today um, and answering those questions. Yeah, thank you, David. Thanks everyone for uh, attending and uh, more than happy to push the discussion further with you anytime you like. Uh, happy there. Thank you. Great. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody, for attending this, uh, this webinar this morning. Um, I hope it's been useful. It's, it's, it, was a, it was a tricky exercise to work out how, how deep to go and, or, and how far to go in terms of the software suite. Our idea was to try and spark uh, interest um, in the functionalities across the full range, across the full uh, capability of the software. And as I explained earlier, we'll be digging deeper into specific modules in, in later um, events. So look out in your calendar for those. Um, we'll be putting a recording of this one on our website um, later uh, and on YouTube. Um, so if any colleagues could benefit from, uh, from just this very quick overview, then point them in the right direction for that. Um, in the meantime, I think just uh, thank you very much for joining us and we hope to see you again at another X Live. Bye.